Hello everyone, it's Linda Stewart, Life Cycle Celebrant, and I am just hanging out today, trying to catch up. I've been away for a week. I was in BC at a speaking um, conference, and I had a chance to share my thoughts on ceremonies and why they matter, and particularly why I think funerals matter. And so I thought I would just hop on and say a quick hello. Um, you can see my little my little dog is hanging out with me today. He's not feeling so great. Hey Bailey, hey Bailey, hi, hi. You feeling better? Yeah, he's a little he's a little under the weather today. So just keeping an eye on him, and thought I'd come on and say a quick hello. So ceremonies, and why do they matter? Well, I got asked that question a lot last week. And there's a lot of angles uh, that I could take, but I think what, what always strikes me as, as why now more than ever, it's so important for us to, to come together and experience ceremonies as human beings is, is based on basically the way, the way we live. I mean, we're in this really disconnectedly connected society. So we're hyper connected, like, like we've never been before with people all over the world. And oftentimes at the expense of the people that live under our own roof, right? I'm not going to win mother of the year awards by telling you that when dinner's ready, I text my kids and they come and they, they fill up their plates and they usually go back to where they were and eat their dinner. You know, back when I was growing up in the 60s and the 70s, that never happened. I mean, first of all, we didn't have cell phones, but I mean, we set the table. We had dinner together every single night of the week and uh, we had dinner at the, th the same kitchen table, except for Sunday. Sundays we would eat in the dining room on the lace tablecloth and uh, we had roast beef, but you know, my family were together at the end of every day and we, we talked and shared and we just, you know, now that simple ritual for many of us is for special occasions only. So our opportunities to come together, to really come together, uh, are limited or we've limited them and social media and all of the wonderful technology that we have has replaced a lot of um, the need to come together, uh, to communicate. You know, we can communicate so easily, but nothing replaces being in the same room with people. You know, um, virtual hugs over Facebook are very nice, but nothing replaces like touch, you know, a real hug. Sometimes that's what we really need. And ceremonies offer that. They offer that in a, in a, really, in a really deep and meaningful way because it's, it's more than just the, the physically being with other people. It's, it's, it's the whole experience of, of being present, of breathing, of stopping and breathing and, and just, just experiencing something that words often fail to express, you know? That's why I, I, I love rituals and ceremonies because sometimes there are no words, right? Sometimes there really just are no words to, to express how we're feeling. And, and we're walking around with all these feelings and we don't quite know what to do with them, right? And they need a place to go. And, and ceremonies and rituals can can offer that, that place to go. Because we need a place to go to physically be with people, but we also need a place for our feelings to go. And it's one of those things that until you actually experience it, it's very hard to put words to, but when it's done well, it can be transformational. And I think we need more of that in life. And I think we need to stop and appreciate the moments that we do have, whether they're moments of of joy, of sorrow, or transition, and really mark them with a beautifully crafted, meaningful, memorable ceremony. So that's my ceremony rant for the day. 
and I hope everyone's doing really well and I will talk to you later. Bye for now.